Okay, welcome to my free trade portfolio update now for January in 2023. I can't believe the whole year has passed us. For some of us, we probably want to forget about 2022, and for others, we may have just about survived. Anyway, on to the next one. So just before we jump into the numbers on the app itself on free trade, I do think it's worth just discussing briefly about the UK market and the FTSE 100 itself, because of course that is where all the investments are actually made. Now, if we look back on the year and how the FTSE 100 is actually done, I think you'll all agree it's done pretty well considering that we thought the FTSE 100 was dead and out. It was old and boring with those old dividend paying stocks and actually it's done pretty well. Now I'll get up on screen now the year to date charts and the yearly chart but you can see so far although the year's only a couple of weeks in we are up 3.8% already which actually puts the FTSE 100 if I'm not mistaken at all time highs or at least very 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 close. And then if we just extend that graph over for the last 12 months we can see we are up nearly 4%. No doubt of course the last month taking a big chunk of that gain. And as always, a quick comparison to the S&P 500, you can see really, I think this shows that complete rotation from those high end growth stocks and technology stocks to the more boring stocks, which actually generate those real cash flows. Because the problem with those hype stocks and some of the ones which got a bit out of hand over the past couple of years is all of their earnings are far into the future. And with interest rates being risen, and of course the cost of borrowing being risen too along with that, it does mean that those earnings in the future, which are promised later on, are worth less when discounted back to today's rates. So the companies who are generating real cash flow now, profits now and dividends now, seem to be a bit more value in this kind of time that we're going through at the moment. Anyway, I do think 2023 is going to be an interesting year and the question will be, are we going to see that rotation continuing toward those old boring value stocks, which no one wanted to touch just a couple of years ago. Anyway, let's dive into the portfolio now. So I'll just get this up on screen for you so you can see what I'm looking at. So I'm opening up my free trade app right now for you. Let me just dive straight into the insights tab, which I think is always important just really to see how the portfolio is done because it's been open now for about a year. I think it may be nearly pretty much on its 12 month anniversary. So this is the money weighted rate of return is 63%. It's a little bit uh, misleading that, but I'll go into that in just a moment. But as we can see, what quite a good benchmark is on this portfolio is that VWRL All World ETF. So for those of you who have not heard of VWRL, it's essentially a global ETF, so a global index fund, which then tracks how the global market has been doing. And as you can see over the past year, even though the market has been pretty bad, VWRL has stood up quite well, I think you'd all agree. But this portfolio, of those UK FTSE 100 stocks, quite high yielding dividend stocks has done pretty well, up over 54%. Bear in mind there's a couple of things, a couple of caveats. There has been some free shares which went into the account over that past year, um, a couple of hundred quids worth. So that will affect the money weighted rate of return. So just be careful. So just be careful with some of these portfolio updates with some of the uh, more unscrupulous uh, finance YouTubers who get a lot of money put into the account. It doesn't actually count as a uh, deposit because it was a zero cost to them. But anyway, you get the point. Either way, outside of that, it has done well as a portfolio anyway. So let's just go back into the portfolio itself now. So I have missed a couple of updates in terms of showing you everything that's gone on in the account. So it's worth just diving in now. We'll go back to November and we can see the different dividends that have been paid into this portfolio. Now, I don't think we get dividends paid every single month with this portfolio because that wasn't exactly the goal of it, but we do get the most months. As we can see in November, every little helps. Thank you very much from Tesco. That's £3.81. Going to, to December, we have Unilever paying whopping £1.86, BP 237 and then in January, not long ago, just a few days ago, we had National Grid come through with £3 and 3p, and then GSK come through at £1.51. And actually doing this portfolio update now, recording it for you now, I've realised if I go over to my account, I've actually not invested those. So that's always a good reminder, £18.16 left. With free trade and lots of other apps, you do actually get a notification that says you've been paid your dividend income. You do also get an email, something which Vanguard could learn from, but that's a whole other story. Anyway, back into the portfolio, let's just go through some of the winners and losers. I'm not going to go for every single name because that was extremely boring and we haven't got any time for that. What I'll do, I'll just pick out a couple of big names because I think you'll see the theme here in this account. I think that generally reflects the global economy. You'll see the big winners really come from that kind of energy sector. So companies like Rio Tinto up 28% in their portfolio. And then the big one, of course, BP being up nearly 40%. Now, BP has had pretty much an unstoppable rise if we go back to its maximum chart here. Now, this bottomed out around 2020 toward the end of 2020. And actually, in my Hargreaves Landon account, I think I made a purchase of BP. I think it was October, November 2020. So I managed to get quite lucky in that one. Now, I did sell out in that position back in the summer for a nice gain. It has gone up since then, seemingly up and up and up, a bit of an unstoppable rise. But it's no surprise, really, as the world's opened up again. And then people have got a bit more positive about the energy sector. Also, you know that Warren Buffett's been rotating heavily into this sector over the past couple of years. Big purchaser of Occidental Petroleum. Now, 
He may or may not own more than 51% of that company already, or he at least has the rights to be able to acquire it. So that's an interesting take. Doesn't necessarily mean you should follow him, so I think there are going to be a lot of people now who are going to be chasing gains and jumping into the energy sector thinking it has to go on, on and on, but absolutely in investing, it does not have to do that. So just be warned. Anyway, outside of that one and close to home, National Grid has done relatively well, only up 7%. But I think this reflects the kind of stability of a company like National Grid. Any company in that kind of utility sector who isn't exactly trying to make the next best thing, make the next greatest iPhone for consumers to buy, is really just going to be kind of ticking along there, paying those dividends consistently and being a staple in your portfolio. And then another sector that's done pretty well is that banking sector. So as you can see, HSBC in this account has done over 37% with all the buys here. If I just expand this chart out for a year, you can see that it's done pretty well while also paying a dividend. Let's not forget about that. Whenever you see charts for companies, do have to factor that in. If you think, oh, it's done nothing, it's pretty flat, you do need to reflect on the fact that if a company's been paying out 5% of capital as a dividend and you reinvested that, you would be up more than 0%, as you can see on the chart. Just quickly reflecting on that banking sector, if you do compare HSBC to, say, Lloyds and Barclays, it has done very, very well, but then that does reflect the fact that HSBC is more of an international bank, whereas Lloyds and Barclays are more UK-based. But then if you factor that in over a much longer period, say five years, as I'll put on screen now on the Google charts, you can see that really it's performed okay-ish, but then it puts it into perspective of how it's done over that longer term. Anyway, I think as always, this is a good reminder that anything can happen in the short term and it does make you feel great that your portfolio is so green in that short term. But really, until those gains are realized, until you make a sale, really those are just paper gains. And if anything, you wanna get your mind used to seeing that red on screen as much as possible. As you can see at the bottom here, you have Halion, which was spun off from GSK. GSK said goodbye to their, uh, I think it was painkiller medications, what are the brands like Centerdyne and other things. Halion now holds that as a separate public company. They've actually been doing pretty well. That number is kind of incorrect somewhat because I did sell my Halion position and rebought it because it was showing an incorrect negative figure. So it hasn't gone up 17.5%. Gone up 17.5% for me, but not if we expand over the period, um, over the year, it's up 5.4%. So just be aware of that one. Now, here's where we need to talk and think about the future of this portfolio. And generally, if you are a dividend investor, how are you going to be smart over the next couple of years? Now, as you may know, your £2,000 personal dividend allowance, which is reset every single tax year, is going to get cut next year to £1,000. And then the next tax year after that is going to get cut to £500. At least that's the plans that the current government have got in place. Now, we don't know the future and if that gets changed or not, but for now, we do need to kind of plan ahead and think about it. Now, a portfolio this size isn't exactly going to blow that out of the water. However, I do have a few other dividend paying stocks across my other portfolios, which unfortunately, quite a large chunk of it sits outside of a stocks and shares ISA. So as you know, if your money doesn't sit inside a stocks and shares ISA, it is going to be liable for tax. And although £2,000 dividend allowance is pretty generous and the majority of the country will probably never get anywhere close to that, it is possible for me with my portfolio size to get to that. And then also as I grow my own business and YouTube business, for example, and many of you out there as well who own your own business and might want to get paid in dividends, you get paid in dividends from your own business as well being self-employed or owning a small business, that's all going to count toward that allowance. And of course, the moment you go over that, you're going to be liable for tax. Now, what you pay will depend on what tax bracket you're in. The normal rate of tax on dividends correct me if I'm wrong, put it up on the screen, um, I think it's being changed to what, 8.5% or something. So it's not exactly going to be game changing, but really as investors, we want to reduce our fees and charges as much as possible, because it's all about those long-term compounded gains. But our goal as investors really is to reduce those fees and charges as much as possible. And if we can avoid paying any kind of taxes, is to absolutely do that, because small amounts of money, when compounded over many, many decades and many, many years, will have a huge effect on our long-term regains. So at the moment, I am at a bit of a crossroads with the account because it is just a general investing account. So it's a completely separate one outside of any stocks and shares ISA, pension or anything like that. It is just a general investing account, which does mean that anything is taxable over your allowances. Now, it's great because it's free and there's no charges on that account as it stands at the moment. But I do need to think about that long term. So moving forward, I'm probably at a position where I would potentially sell all my assets here and in some of my other accounts too because I want to get as much money as I can into stocks and shares ISIS as possible over the next couple of tax years. Now, I've got a couple of months before the tax year ends. As you know, it'll be the end of March. So I need to get my kind of thinking hat on about what I'm going to do. And then as we go into the new year as well, think about utilizing that as much as possible and potentially even maxing out both years worth of allowances. It's not going to be new money. This is money already sat in other investing accounts. Now, I would love to continue a UK dividend account and I could definitely continue doing this one 
as my only one outside of ISIS. But do let me know kind of your thoughts as well and generally what you're doing with your portfolio because it is very easy to build up a portfolio outside of a stocks and shares ISA. I mean, I know when I started investing, I had no idea what a stocks and shares ISA was. I thought my money would be kind of locked away, didn't bother investigating it. And I just went straight in for a general fund and share account. Of course, if I could go back now and tell myself otherwise, then things would be different. But hey, we are where we are. Anyway, take this as a bit of a reminder that investing is not just about the stocks and shares you buy, your ETFs, your index funds. It's about being as tax efficient as possible too, because all those little 1%, 2%, 5%, 10% charges and those transaction charges do add up over your lifetime of your account. And if we can reduce those, really we're gonna be much better off in the long term. So we can avoid those, it makes absolute sense. But do let me know in the comment section your thoughts on that and what you're potentially doing too. Because I know a lot of you really like that kind of idea of UK dividend stock investing, getting those dividends every month, seeing that passive income, reinvesting it and looking at long-term capital growth too. But it really does motivate a lot of people to see that money going in. And I know what you mean by you say that. It is quite nice and quite cool to remind yourself real money comes into the account and you can actually invest it however you like. Anyway, moving forward, I'm definitely going to be giving Invest Engine a go, especially for ETFs for one of my ISAs. I'm not sure if it's going to be this year or the next year. And then also... I've got a bit of money in Trading212 at the moment. I think I want to utilize their ISA again because both of them are free. Trading212 might be the place that I can play around with some individual stocks. And Invest Engine, I think, is going to be the place that I'm going to keep my ETFs and really focus on index funds and try and balance out how much money I'm allowed to play with on individual stocks with index funds. The majority of my money will always remain in index funds. And I want to keep that as a full majority, probably. 70 to 80 percent of the way kind of matches up with my risk profile and of course tiny bits of other investments outside of that as well anyway i'll leave a playlist now up on screen so you can go back through all of my portfolio updates and hopefully join me in the future make sure you subscribe for the latest ones and as always happy investing